Hey everyone, me Kevin here. Yesterday I brought to you a very thorough report from an economist at the Federal Reserve suggesting dangers coming to the housing market, including high levels of mortgage delinquencies, high levels of bank, quote, loan loss reserves, AKA, we're gonna take this pot of money and set it aside because we're probably gonna lose it. And that was, according to this Fed economist, a signal that banks are preparing for a potential collapse. Tighter mortgage lending standards in the future could maybe reduce buying demand in the future. And lower consumer confidence means at some point people might just go, mm, yeah, mm, not interested anymore. And all of these things combined could potentially be an issue for the housing market coming. And that's why yesterday we broke down this Fed economist, which you got to respect. He's working at the Fed. He's an economist. This is his job. And he's saying storm clouds are coming to the housing market. Now, we broke down his argument in detail yesterday. So today's video is part two. If you have not yet seen part one, I will link it down below. I encourage you to watch part one. Uh, but either way, whether you've seen part one or not, this is really good to watch because in part one, I did not agree that mortgage delinquencies were a substantial issue due to mortgage forbearance and the way data is collected. I did agree that lending standards tightening and consumer confidence were problems. And on bank loss reserves, I said, you know, this could actually be an issue, but tomorrow, what I said yesterday, so today, we get updated information from banks like Citibank and JP Morgan. And so that's what we're going to look at right now. So that way, we can follow up on yesterday's video and see, all right, the Fed economist says banks having higher loan loss reserves is bad and is a sign of a crash coming. So here's a very simple way to understand this video. Number one, if banks indicate higher loan loss reserves, meaning they've now increased the amount of loan loss reserves they're putting aside or allowance for, for basically loans to go bad, then that would be bad. This is the second time for Citigroup and the third time for Chase that they're able to report to us. And if the number's going up, that would be very bad. If the number's going down, that would be a very good sign. That would be a sign that maybe the banks aren't worried anymore. Uh, number two, if banks indicate that anywhere else in their language that there's any kind of issue in the real estate lending space, then that would also be bad. So. Let's go ahead and jump on over to the uh, JP Morgan press release and the uh, Citibank press release. And let's see what they say because this information is going to give us guidance on is the dude at the Fed right? Is there going to be a housing crisis, crisis coming because of larger loan loss reserves? Or are banks U-turning in the opposite direction? All right, well, here we go. This is JP Morgan's letter. Let's start with this. So I've gone ahead and highlighted some of the most important parts. Uh, first thing we start with here is home lending benefited from strong production margins. That's actually the same thing we heard in quarter two. So they're making more money on home lending right now. And this was actually interesting. Credit card spending showed positive year over year growth in September for the first time since widespread shutdowns. Both of those things actually help insulate the bank from loan reserves. So uh, both uh, loan loss reserves. So both of those things are good. Okay, let's keep moving on here. So at JP Morgan, uh, this is the uh, the private bank. At JP Morgan, uh, we actually have a provision here for credit losses. And the provision for credit losses in quarter 220 was massive. It was like $10.4 billion. Uh, and in the last report, they actually only set aside $611 million. Dramatically fewer loan loss reserves. Let's take a look at this. On the consumer banking division, uh, so this would include home lending, credit cards, auto loans, consumer banking, business banking. Uh, remember this too, let me just pull this up really quick. This was April. In April, the consumer banking division, we went from you know normal loan loss reserves here of around 1.2, 1.3 trillion to 5.7, like a really big increase, right? That was scary. Seeing that number go up was scary, but we go to Chase now and look at what's actually happening. The number has dramatically declined. And this report is from today. This is like the most current report you could possibly get that we went from setting aside 5.8 trillion to setting aside 749 million. All right, let's uh, keep moving on. Uh, driven by high, higher production margins. We've got that here. Uh, Write-offs, charge-offs were driven primarily by credit cards. Uh, no issues for home lending. And regarding 300 million 
uh, in, in reductions for home lending here in their portfolio. They've got a note here. They basically closed out some of their home loans, uh, and that might mean people refinanced and got loans elsewhere because maybe Chase's standards are too tight. And this is something that you find when Chase tightens their mortgage credit standards, which they have been doing. People just go to different lenders. Like, look at Rocket Mortgage. They're kicking butt right now. Uh, okay, so that's JP Morgan. That's actually really good news. Let's jump on over to City. So here's City's uh, document, and they mentioned that we saw higher activity in our mortgage and wealth management products. So the, here's just an example again of the rich getting richer, right? Like the rich are going to buy houses. The poor people don't have jobs and can't buy houses because they lost their jobs. So you see this really widening of the wealth gap here, and it's it's really sad, uh, but that it is what is happening. Regarding credit losses at a city group, in quarter two, 2020, we had 5.6 billion in credit losses. And here in the latest report released today, we're down to 314 million. Substantially fewer ACLs, uh, allowance for credit losses. It's a little different than the way uh, Chase lists it. But uh, actually, seriously, both of these reports, really good. Global consumer banking, they actually, on global, uh, global consumer banking side, they took a negative. They actually took money out of the loan loss reserve, saying we, we over budgeted for loan loss reserves. So there you go, folks. This is really good news. And it comes on the heels of this Fed economist going, I don't know, man, the banks, the banks, they see storm clouds coming. They see storm clouds coming. Well, if that were still true, they're U-turning right now. Now, that doesn't mean we won't see a crash, but right now the latest data is that the banks are U-turning on their reserves. Obviously, we'll see again in three months how things are evolving, especially since that's when we'll see less people in forbearance. So we'll have more data to track. But this is the latest as of today. And if you like this sort of analytical stuff, make sure to check out the amazing courses where I go really analytical on teaching you how to make money investing in real estate, investing in stocks correctly by uh, checking out the psychology of money sections. Uh, and of course, if you want, you can learn how to make money on making YouTube videos. All those courses are linked down below. And folks, we'll see you next time. Thanks so much for watching and until then.